Bonjour, hello, sup guys. Welcome back to the most amazing top 10. I'm your host, Melissa Malati, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 strange coincidences in history not even scientists can explain. So let's get right into it. In our number 10 spot today, we have the man who survived two atomic If you went to history class in high school, then you probably will remember hearing about the two atomic that the US dropped on the two Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. 90,000 people were killed due to the blasts and the radiation. But in 2009, the Japanese government confirmed that a man was in both of these cities during their and he survived both of them. Come again? Yes, a man named Tajumu Yamaguchi was on a business trip in Hiroshima on August 6th when he looked up at the sky and saw the B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. Before he knew it, he saw a great flash in the sky and he was blasted by the impact. By August 9, he was back home in Nagasaki recovering from the incident, only to endure it again. Even though you would probably think that he might not have lived long due to the radiation exposure, he actually lived to 93 and passed away in 2010. That's an insane story that makes you think out of 90,000 deaths this man survived, he must have had a higher purpose. Coming up in our ninth spot today is more of a historical pop culture moment that scientists just wouldn't be able to explain. The discovery of the twins named Jim, a personal favorite of mine. You may or may not have heard of this story before, but personally I think it's fascinating. In 1979, a set of twins that were separated at birth reunited at the age of 39. When they met up, they discovered some pretty crazy coincidences. Both of the boys had a adoptive parents that named them Jim. Both of the boys loved math and carpentry and both pursued a career in security. But the coincidences don't end here. Here's where you start thinking, there must be something else going on that we don't understand. Are you ready? Both boys married women named Linda. Both boys then divorced their Lindas and both remarried women named Betty. What? <laughs> Shivers. <laughs> but it doesn't end here. They both had children and named them James Allen. <sighs> Mind blown. Apps like total shivers right now. <laughs> In our eighth spot today, we have the ship survivor. Imagine being on the Titanic and surviving that horrific accident. Then imagine being in another ship that ended up sinking and surviving that, and then being in a ship collision after that. That's definitely enough to make me never board another ship again and perhaps also have PTSD whenever I see water. That was the case for Violet Jessup, who was a stewardess aboard the RMS Titanic in 1912. She managed to abort a lifeboat after being handed a baby to look after. Years later, she was aboard its sister ship, HMHS Britannic, in 1916, when it had sunk. She actually almost died in this sinking as she was on a lifeboat that got sucked under by the propellers, but she jumped out in time. She was also aboard the RMBS Olympic in 1911 when it collided with the British warship. So to say that she lived quite the life would be an understatement. She actually died of old age in 1971. In our seventh spot today, we have the arguably fateful death of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. I say arguably because, well, just you wait and you decide. Yet another story that I hope you learned in history class, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and the beginning of World War II. You may have learned that he died after an attack on his car, but you may not know that the bomb that was meant for his car actually hit the car behind him and the attempt failed and Ferdinand was able to get away unscathed. The assassins, we can imagine, were probably feeling hangry, due of course to this failed attempt and most likely hunger, as they then decided to stop at a nearby cafe for a sandwich. The Archduke, probably thankful to be alive, dashed off and continued on to safety when his driver took a wrong turn and ended up in front of the sandwich shop. The assassin saw him, shot him and his wife, and thus began the whirlwind of World War II. Makes you think that perhaps he was fated to die, or maybe he was just having a really bad luck day. <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our sixth spot today, we have the deaths of Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. In 1775, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams became good friends fast. They worked together to draft the Declaration of Independence, and they also spent time together as diplomats for the US in Europe. They had a falling out in 1801 when Jefferson became president over Adams, and they didn't reconcile until 1812. On July 4th, 
1826 though, the day that America declared its independence 50 years prior, Thomas Jefferson passed away. But what's interesting is that John Adams, in another state, was on his deathbed, only to say the words, Thomas Jefferson survives. And then, he passed away. Does this mean he saw Jefferson's ghost greet him on his deathbed? They both ended up passing on the same date, and not only that, but on the date that was seemingly their historical purpose. Coincidence? I think not. In our fifth spot today, we have the saving of Robert Todd Lincoln. You may or may not know this, but Robert Todd Lincoln is famously known as the son of the former US President Abraham Lincoln. In late 1864, Robert was traveling from New York to Washington when he found himself leaning against a stopped train. When the train started moving, he fell onto the tracks, only to be saved by an actor named Edwin Booth. When he later realized that his savior was the famous actor Edwin Booth, he made sure to thank him. It wasn't until much later did Edwin learn the identity of the man he saved, as he was the son of the president whom was shot by Edwin's brother, John Wilkes Booth. That's too weird of a coincidence for me. I guess perhaps if Lincoln's son had died, maybe Lincoln himself wouldn't have been where he was on that fateful day that he passed. In our fourth spot today, we have another weird coincidence revolving around Robert Lincoln. The death of not one, not two, but three American presidents occurred right in front of him. Highly sus, Robert. The first was of course his own father's assassination, President Abraham Lincoln. After his death, Robert and his mother moved to Chicago where he planted roots, got married, had children, and created his law practice. He continued to work in politics as the Secretary of War under the presidency of President James A. Garfield in 1881. But while at a railroad station in Washington with Robert and a few others, Garfield was assassinated. Then in 1901, Robert was invited to attend a Pan-American exposition in Buffalo by President William McKinley, only to witness his assassination. Apparently Robert has been quoted as saying that there was a certain fatality about the presidential function when I am present. Is there Robert? Or did you perhaps concoct the death of your father with your savior Edwin Booth and his brother John, and then perhaps all these other incidences after? In our third spot today, we have the Comet family. It is said that your odds of being killed by a comet is 1 in 1,600,000, so not very high. You're more likely to be hit by lightning, and even that is 1 in 500,000. And so of course, on top of these odds, no one would expect that a comet would hit the home of a French family named can you guess? Comet, or commit. I love the French. <laughs> Comet, what are the odds? Probably in the trillions. Thankfully, nobody in the family was hurt and they now have their very own space rock as a souvenir. Life is so funny and weird. In our number two spot, we have the Civil War House. In 1861, when the Civil War broke out with the first battle of Bull Run, it at some point made its way through the garden of Wilmer McLean in Virginia. After the mass devastation, Wilmer decided to leave his home and he moved to a new place, Appomattox, Virginia. But of course, the war followed him there and actually came to a close when Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse, just only steps away from McLean's new property. Poor guy, he just wanted to live a peaceful, war-free life. Is that too much to ask for? Or perhaps he's psychic and he knew that peace would happen in this particular town. Hmm, who knows, but interesting coincidence. Finally, in our number one spot today, we have the very interesting birth and death of Mark Twain. Mark Twain was born on November 30th, 1835 in Florida, Missouri, the day that a very special comet was in the sky, Halley's Comet. The Halley's Comet returns to the Earth's vicinity approximately 75 years, give or take a bit, due to the gravitational pull of the planets that it passes. About 74 years later, Mark Twain made a prediction that his death would coincide with the comet's next appearance, just like his birth. He was known to have said that, it will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said, no doubt. Now here are two unaccountable freaks. They came in together, they must go out together. And he was right. He ended up dying April 21st, 1910, the day after Halley's Comet made its return. It was also a very special day as it was the first time the comet was captured on camera. Pretty awesome if I do say so myself. All right guys, that's all the time I have for you today. I'm your host, Melissa Malati, and see you next time. Good day, sir.